Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in the morning session of the Hindu Analysis Paper and in the evening the PIB lessons come both in Hindi and English medium and the PDFs you will get on the Study IQ website and on my Facebook group. Okay, so we will start with the quote, you are what you do not, what you say, what you will do. You see, most of the people, this case is there, uh, and mainly with the average people, the crowd, they will always pose like this that whatever they are saying whatever they are ex expressing that is their real self but it is not like that okay it may be a, a confusion it may be a misunderstanding about ourselves also okay we may think that what we are telling what we are expressing what we are thinking we are actually like that but we are actually uh, the person the way we act whatever we do that is the real self of us okay so you are what you do not what you say you will do okay so doing is important and for doing right thinking is important and for right thinking right approach positivity is important and uh, struggling abilities and the patience these are the basic things so that's how you will achieve what you will uh, do and what your personality would be and the way people would judge you so it is going to be a very very important thing in your future life now about the pen drive courses of uh, study IQ. You see compare study IQ's standard with other uh, available standards and you will understand each and everything about it, why these courses are important and you uh, know about our dedication, you know about our consistency daily that uh, we appear on YouTube and all and these courses are, uh, are going to be a great help for all of you people. I'm telling you, first time I'm uh, telling you about this on my videos. So, uh, check these courses and the prelims is coming so these courses are going, going to be the great great deal because you go to coachings and all you spend lakhs of rupees that's of no use stay at your home with these videos repeat them again and again and study and you will be successful the questions that I gave to you yesterday Kurdistan is a UN recognized territory it is wrong because Kurdistan is not a UN recognized territory the map I showed uh, to you yesterday okay uh, where it was having some part of uh, southern turkey then it was having some part of uh, northern syria then some part of northern iraq some part of western iran okay so this is how kurdistan population uh, is there in the west asia and kurds are not the largest ethnic groups okay they are the three groups but not the largest groups so d is the right answer here next in the select committee the persons are these persons are prime minister as a chairman not as a member member so that's wrong so and leader of opposition is correct and chief justice of india as a chairman it is wrong because uh, he is not a chairman prime minister is the chairman and not mandatorily because chief justice of india can appoint any other supreme court senior judge also okay so two only is the correct answer here next tribes which are related with the assam mainly assam uh, deals with only uh, these two among them angam is the nagaland tribe and Miti is the manipur tribe okay so uh, this is the thing these uh, tribes actually are given the status of scheduled tribes uh, along with some other tribes okay so two and three is the correct answer here vocabulary some important words that i found in the paper and now the important article again a repeating thing the ongoing issue of alok verma now alok uh, verma has given a resignation because he was transferred to some uh, fire department not that much important a department and uh, the way he was dealing with high profile cases now uh, he cannot do anything about that because he is now uh, going to be a retired person and uh, 31st was the last date for him and now he has resigned before that questions have been raised about the committee refusing Mr. Verma a personal hearing committee has refused the hearing that's the contentious issue here the panel apparently chose not to hear him on the ground that central vigilance commissioner who held an inquiry on the supreme court's earlier orders had heard him in the presence of the retired judge A.K.S. Patnaik, the supervisor appointed by the court, and that prima facie findings against Mr. Verma were enough to conclude that he should not remain in that office. So the main allegation of the corruption that was there on Alok Verma and on uh, Mr. Astana both. Prima facie findings say that he should not remain in office. Okay, and that was the main trouble there where Alok Verma moved to supreme court but not clear judgment came from supreme court the additional conditions that supreme court court imposed that again uh, 
brought the same situation back to square one where political executive was about to decide about the person not directly now this time indirectly they decided about it with the selection committee route okay and as he was neither suspended nor transferred but only given a post of equal rank there was no need of hearing this was the argument given by the committee that he is not suspended on or he is not transferred he he was only sent on leave at that night so that's the thing but anyhow logically if you uh, say and if uh, in a lot of articles today in the indian express also they have said that supreme court's at court's authority was not doing a proper uh, work because their verdict was not clear and by that verdict the whole process is now circumvented and again they have held alok orma out of the situation anyhow okay uh, first uh, through this uh, notification route and now through the selection committee route even if this position is not strictly untenable from a legal standpoint it has serious implications for cbi's independence because the main thing is the main person that person is out who was dealing with high profile cases that's the thing anyhow whatever happened that doesn't matter now demand for getting mr verma's response should have been considered that's the main allegation and mr verma has claimed that the cvc report was based on only uh, on the complainants charges against him so that was the whole ground of the report and he was not heard there his opinion his uh, stand was not heard that was the main thing an important learning from the entire episode is that the bipartisan appointment process for the post with the presence of a high judicial functionary as envisaged by 2030 amendment this process of selection committee which was decided in 2003 okay where they said that prime minister would be there leader of opposition would be there and one person from uh, the supreme court chief justice of india would be there but that thing is not enough to thwart the political stagments uh, uh, stratagems means political interference is still there it is prevailing and that is the main contentious issue whatever recommendations that the committees have uh, had given in the past they have said that this authority this cbi body should be uh, away from the political interference uh, interference but this political interference is prevailing and by this incident it is again proved that the interference is not gone anywhere far from resolving the institutional crisis in the agency the outcome may have deeply politicized it okay so that has happened next article regarding the sabri mala issue repeated articles repeated issues but some new angles which are given where the writer is connecting this issue with the mahad uh, satyagraha of b r ambedkar regarding the untouchables uh, mass drinking of water from a public tank okay so that was the issue so in both the cases writer is saying the issue of exclusion is there okay here uh, the menstruating age group women are excluded there the dalits were excluded although she is saying that these two are not similar cases there are some differences but exclusion is the common thing and intimidation of the weaker group is the common thing now no freedom without equality at sabrimala freedom of religion means the right to practice one's own uh, religion not the freedom to undermine fundamental rights how when bindu abini and kanaka durga two, uh, two women who entered ayappa temple at sabrimala on january 2 elicited a purification ritual from the shrine's priests one was reminded of the purification of the chavda tank at mahad in 1927 at that time what happened uh, ambedkar led this uh, 10000 dalits and he protested about it and he said that we will uh, drink the water from the public tank it is our basic right but you see at that time there was no constitution there was no civil societies there were no institutions to uh, give him a safeguard but he protested about it but his values only were there who created this egalitarian constitution for us and out of this constitution only we could make this much progress in the last 70 years and uh, nobody can deny that the importance of constitution and constitutional values they have only saved this nation but you see in both these cases these uh, uh, here the women at that time these dalits okay they were excluded at that time also in a similar way they 
what they did at that time when they drank the water they poured 108 earthen vessels of panchagavya the five organic substances associated with the holy cow including milk urine dung and all okay so they purified that thing for that tank at that time the same way they purified the temple okay and to undo the supposedly polluting effects of close to 10,000 mahar drinking water uh, drinking the water so pollution factor you see at that time also they said you have polluted and in the Sabrimala case also they has they said that you have polluted the temple so there are similarities the memory of Mahat Ambedkar's Mahat Satyagraha had two chapters on March uh, 19 and uh, December 25 20, 1927 year the symbolism of mass drinking of the water with Ambedkar himself taking the first sip was akin to an act of civil disobedience why this is important why the date is important because it is the date it is before the communal award year 1932 where all kinds of differences erupted and uh, with Gandhi Ambedkar said that uh, it is not acceptable to me that I, I know that you support Dalit's cause and you have called them Harijans and all but society is not accepting us totally we have uh, we are rejected people and we are outcast till now you go to villages you go to uh, any community in this city you, you go to some of the freedom uh, uh, fight uh, these uh, freedom struggle leaders also they are also very much conservative and they don't subscribe to my ideas sometimes so all kinds of differ uh, differences they occurred at that time so it was before that at this particular time he was totally a follower of Gandhi and he called it a civil disobedience both were carefully planned peaceful and a disciplined protest this sabrimala protest and the mahad protest both were planned peaceful and disciplined yet were violently disrupted mobs rioters and police colluded to attack and disperse the mahar satyagrahis at that time the local british administration at that time ended up siding with the hindu hardliners so the writer is saying that at that, that time also administration was with Hindu hardliners because they were the dominant groups and they were the main leaders of the society and they were uh, the leading mass causes okay so at that time also local British government and the administration they ended up siding with the uh, hardliners who were orthodox communities and who were protesting Mahats okay now see at that time Ambedkar's efforts were focused on claiming that the tank was public resource and he was talking about the basic human right but nobody was uh, allowing him to do that. He was not interested in entering the Vireshwar temple nearby but did play a role in temple entry Satyagraha at the Parvati temple in Pune in 1929. So you see here he talked about basic human rights and uh, mass drinking happened and after that what happened? Those people protested a lot. But they did not do much at that time in 1927. But in 1929, when he supported these temple entry movements, at that time, all these campaigns ultimately failed. Upper castes pushed back using Brahmin scriptures of Adhikar and Bahishkar. Okay, exclusion. Arguments from private property, outright physical violence, as well as the law and order machinery of the colonial state to keep Dalits out. You see, first they raised the issue of adhikars and scriptures that it is totally a pollution second after that when it this was accepted uh, that uh, it is according to our uh, scriptures and our, uh, our our old tradition okay so that was accepted uh, that's okay that you have polluted next what they did they uh, claimed all kinds of uh, uh, issue in legal forms they said that you have entered our private property these temples are on the private property so we will file cases against you so they filed cases against all these people against Ambedkar also and whole machinery came on these poor groups okay and they kept Dalits out adding insult to injury first they performed purification rituals then they obtained stray, stray orders from government authorities and later they filed legal cases so these all acts are of tactics of intimidation that is also a common thing in the Sabrimala case so the intimidation of the weaker group whether it's Dalits or it's women the writer is saying that always uh, the poor is stalked poor is attacked and constitution is the only safeguard 
for these people if constitution would have not been there then these people would not have been surviving till now because always these dominant groups they want to dominate they want them to comply to them okay so that's the issue and at mahad ambedkar endorsed the gandhian language of satyagraha but a decade later ambedkar was disgusted by the resilience of caste discrimination terminally alienated from gandhi on the question of untouchability and disillusioned about political efficacy of satyagraha he did not subscribe to satyagraha later and he did mass conversion into buddhism for all these dalit communities in nagpur in 1956 and even he said that i died hindu but i will uh, sorry i i was born in hindu uh, born in a hindu house but i will not uh, die being a hindu that's the extreme statement he made apart from the reactionary impulse to purify what has been sullied by the proposition of equality sabrimala is and is not like mahad she is saying that it is totally not like mahad but these instances of inclusion intimidation and the denial of equality are the main issues a specific group is targeted for exclusion in both the cases okay in today's india article 14 of the constitution guarantees equality that's a guarantee and you see if you talk about the religion issue here what about the equality here you see nobody can give evidence to all these gods allah or any other uh, holy belief of us okay nobody can give evidence but it's all a matter of belief and when it's a matter of belief and following a religious path following a spiritual path these are very very pious thing holy things okay and they guide us in our life nobody can deny that okay so these are very positive hopes in our life but you see when it is only a matter of belief then this should be individualistic and that's that's the issue that constitution also uh, upheld constitution said that it's all only an individual thing and that's why the article 25 allows allows us following any kind of religion and any kind of religious path procedure that we may subscribe to and it doesn't matter that what we believe in who is our god who is our uh, god in a what uh, uh, what you say that uh, whom we follow and what our spiritual path is so constitution guarantees us these things so that's why when they are intimidating uh, intimidating and they are actually polluting this concept of equality that is guaranteed by constitution so that's the big problem okay nobody can deny women from this 41 day pilgrimage you see uh, when in the in the last article it was said that uh, uh, even the males who are not following these things religiously uh, in a proper way uh, they are not abstaining from sex they are not abstaining from drugs they are not abstaining from alcohol but still they are involved with this finance exercise so that's no way a finance but they are allowed in the temple but the women who are totally religious who are totally dedicated they are giving respect and they are following the path of lord ayappa and they call him god they believe him so these women are not allowed so that's a bizarre idea that's a illogical idea so it is precisely ambedkar's momentous intervention in our life as a nation that gives us an egalitarian constitution and a strong judiciary otherwise this country would not have been possible as britishers said but our constitution was the main uh, cornerstone of our democracy that has upheld this whole nation and its constitutional values only are guiding our path path of uh, polity path of uh, bureaucracy path of any law making all these procedures only have saved this nation till now he did not have uh, these institutions to back him up during his own shattering struggle against caste but he ensured that an untouchability was outlawed and that equal citizenship and fundamental rights are there regardless of gender or community were enshrined in the chartered document of indian republic and that is the constitution okay so you see so great this person was the historical president of vicom vicom satyagraha happened in kerala together with the gains of decades of progressive politics in post colonial kerala make the resurgence of religious orthodoxy you see kerala is one of the most advanced state in india 
uh, fastest growing metropolitan cities are there in Kerala. Biggest number of metropolitan cities are there in Kerala, and uh, the highest level of education is in is in Kerala. Highest level of uh, gender parity is in Kerala. There are more women uh, on thousand males. Okay, so one of the most advanced state is Kerala, and it is giving a lot of workforce to the whole world. In the area of medical uh, the nurses and the medical practitioners they all are from uh, this uh, state of Kerala so so progressive a state when in this state these kind of things are happening where orthodoxy is dominating now and this political issues are dominating the issue of logic although it's a tradition although it's an issue of uh, belief system although it's an issue of religion but you see the debate should be open and this is not logically wrong that when women are dedicated they call Lord Ayappa as a uh, life giving uh, guide okay and uh, they are doing this finance in whole hearted way and they are following all the rituals and the males who are not following who are involved in drugs uh, alcohol and uh, they are not abstaining from sex those people are allowed then certainly this issue is to be discussed okay this issue should come on a public sphere again and uh, this way the, when the execution is not possible even after supreme court has given its verdict then it's a problem so the 620 kilometer wall of women that we uh, saw on the first day of uh, january on new year's day saw kerala's women asking for the right to worship ayappa like their male counterparts was this wall in 2019 like the walk on mahad in 1927 yes in a certain sense so this is all the article about so freedom of religion means the freedom to practice and pursue one's own religion, not the freedom to undermine the fundamental rights of others. So that's the thing. Now hurrying through the legislation, next article, it is regarding the 124th amendment bill, you see, which uh, uh, actually applied the reservation, 10% reservation for the economically backward groups, okay, economically weaker section, EWS section, parliament ended the Penultimate session of this Lok Sabha with both cases, both houses, passing the Constitution Bill 2019, 124th Amendment Bill. But you see the question the writer is raising here, it is about the procedure that has been followed, parliamentary procedure. The passage of the quota bill highlights grave gaps in India's parliamentary procedures. The process by which this was done illustrates the collective failure of parliamentarians to review the government's proposals and hold it to account. Okay. Hasty steps, steps that were taken and the sequence of event, if we observe what actually happened with this case, on Monday, January 7, it was reported that the cabinet had approved a bill to provide reservation to poor candidates regardless of their caste and this would be introduced in Lok Sabha regardless of their caste. Note, note this thing down. Okay. And the date was January 7, the last date of the winter session last date of the winter session was tuesday okay and on january 7 it was reported that the cabinet has approved the bill so only one day news reports also suggested that the rajya sabha would extend its session by a day so that this bill could be discussed on wednesday also a wednesday was the additional day but official announcement was done, not done regarding the extension of the house okay on wednesday also otherwise uh, it would have been the uh, closing session on Tuesday but there was no formal press release by the press information bureau uh, the PIB analysis that, that I do daily where all these uh, press release from the government sizes, uh, sites is there okay so that was also not released next the rules of procedure of Lok Sabha require every bill to be circulated at least two days ahead of the introduction but here you see seven uh, on seventh it was declared that cabinet has passed it and on Tuesday only, on 8th, they will uh, bring this bill to the house. So no time was given. This is to give time for MPs. These two days actually, which are a norm. These two days are a time for MPs to read the bill and discuss it. Okay, when the vote on the motion to introduce the bill is taken up. So before that, they can discuss it. This bill was not circulated even on Tuesday morning. On 8th, on the last day, even on uh, Tuesday morning, this was not circulated. At 11 a.m., when they asked, when an unstarred question asked the ministry that, are you exploring the scope of providing reservation for poor candidates 
फ्रॉम द फॉरवर्ड कम्युनिटीज फॉर एजुकेशन एंड एम्प्लॉयमेंट सो एट इलेवन एम मिनिस्ट्री सेट कैटेगोरिकली दैट देर इज नो सच प्रपोजल अंडर कंसिडरेशन दे डिनाइड दिस एंड आफ्टर वन आवर एंड थर्टी मिनट्स एट इलेवन एट ट्वेल्व फोर्टी सिक्स पी एम द बिल वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड यू सी द जोक हियर दे सेट दैट वी आर नॉट एक्सप्लोरिंग एनी आइडिया ओके ऑन इलेवन ए एम द सेम डे दे आर सेंग वी आर डिनाइंग दिस प्रपोजल and at 12:46 pm the bill was introduced with copies having been circulated to mps a few minutes earlier which should have been two days now it's uh, it has come to few minutes earlier the usual practice is to refer bills to the respective standing committee of parliament this step allows mps to solicit public feedback you see when they refer this bill to pscs parliamentary standing committees which are one of the most important instruments in the legislature that scrutinize all these uh, all these bills uh, and the proposals and the drafts and that's very very vital okay but that thing was not done and clearly with far reaching implications this scrutiny mechanism was bypassed when they did not uh, send this bill to parliamentary standing committees the debate started around 5 pm on 8th january tuesday a few hours mp had been given a copy the debate ended around 10 pm okay house was adjourned meanwhile the rajya sabha hardly functioned that day due to repeated disruptions as opposition usually does okay finally the chair adjourned the house till the next day and the bill was not circulated ahead of the uh, ahead of being introduced it was not examined by a committee there was hardly any time between its introduction and final discussion barring a few small parties none of the larger opposition parties asked for the bill to be carefully considered by a parliamentary committee so nobody bothered to send it to parliamentary committee so they all were bypassing the parliamentary procedure okay even in the rajya sabha where they might have been able to muster the numbers to ensure this okay the british contrast is important here now when this bypassing is happening then we should uh, look towards the parent institution for us the british parliament we are uh, following all the system of a uh, parliamentary system copying the uh, british system not copying but uh, most things we have taken from the parliamentary system of britain okay three important ways in which the british parliament works better than ours what first the absence of anti defection law anti defection law actually stops mps from going against the party's stand okay if one party says that we will say yes to this bill then no mp can say no it uh, he cannot apply his mind or he cannot apply his logic whether the party is uh, going in a foolish manner and they are not being logical but still anti defection law stops the mp from saying no so this thing is not there in the british parliament this was done in 1985 and this 10th schedule was added in the constitution that there would be an anti defection law so that was a wrong precedent that was established okay mp can uh, cannot vote according to their conscience now second it is known exactly how each mp voted okay all their votes and all there is a record that uh, mps have voted according to this idea and uh, these are their votes so this record is there but only 7% of bills original bills ordinary bills i am talking about ordinary bills they are recorded okay in the last 10 years if we look at the data only 7% of the other bills had a recorded vote otherwise it's only voice votes so regarding the voice votes nobody can say uh, clearly that who voted for what but uh, because the majority is there so voice votes are working okay so that's again a big problem and the third and the biggest problem is the speaker insisted on the supremacy of parliament and allowed a mention against the wishes of the government now what is what is the problem here speaker insisted it is right but problem is unlike in india the independence of speaker is secured in the uk because in uk when speaker is elected he leaves all parties he is a uh, totally impartial person balanced person but here in india you see the joke here the speaker who has a lot of powers who decides about the anti defection law issues and uh, uh, who who declares about a bill that whether it is going to be a money bill or not these powers are there with the speaker and the speaker is from the ruling party that's the illogical thing here and uk has uh, mocked this thing a lot of times uh, that what is this procedure 
how you are going to conduct a balanced house it is going to be a totally biased house biased uh, with the government because the uh, uh, ruling party okay ruling party is in dominance the speaker is from the ruling party so no party contests against the speaker in the next general election this thing is there in U uh, uk that no party contest against the speaker in the next general election but in india you see uh, if we take the example of the present speaker she is from uh, the ruling party and uh, the congress party is the opposition in the next election in the next election they will be totally confronting each other because they are both from both uh, uh, different parties so this is going to be a problem but this thing is not there in uk and this is a very logical thing no uh, uh, even uh, uh, any any person can say this that the person who is on the chair that should be a balanced person that should be a neutral person that should not uh, subscribe to any specific party but this thing is not there frequent bypassing of committees the one of the uh, other big issue just 25 percent of bills have been referred to committees in lok sabha insufficient time is a big factor and research support to examine bills and the lack of calendar is again a big issue you see bypassing of committee they don't send these bills to standing committees and all most of the times because they say that there is no time and all but you see the uh, bills regarding these grave questions of uh, reservation and all uh, they should be discussed and they should be sent to parliamentary committees because these uh, committees are the tools to check and balance thing okay and lack of calendar is again a big issue parliament is held at the convenience of the government only so who is ruling the country according to that the calendar would be made this is the convention so we need to address each of these issues to strengthen parliament and protect our democracy if these things are not addressed then certainly democracy would be in a great peril okay so this is the article all about regarding the uh, scrutiny of the parliamentary procedure that was adopted and certainly there are logics you can understand them and uh, patiently you can decide about this next u.s president promises changes to h1b visas some changes were done some uh, limitations were put on these visas and what are these visas these uh, h1b program that grants temporary visas to highly educated immigrants who work in specialty occupations such as technology or medicine so doctors engineers all these professionals who have had actually made america great in the past decades okay so regarding that this procedure is and you see america says that we want to encourage talented and highly skilled people to pursue career option in the us you see the protectionism is going on and the conservatism is conservatism is uh, totally prevalent in the trump administration but still you see the most important thing that made america great great still they are following that they are saying that we want to encourage talented people it doesn't matter from where they are coming but the talented people dedicated people they should come here in this country you see we should learn a lot from this country here in india uh, these scientists talented people they are always troubled with the political interference whatever happened with the uh, indian science congress and all and even the nobel laureates uh, they had to say that say that this circus should stop and uh, the political uh, rhetorics and all these speeches which are being made on the scientific platform they should stop till that extent uh, these scientists these talented people in india are miffed and the fund crunches and uh, not support from the, uh, uh, the the budgetary supports are not there so these things are totally uh, are typical things okay and here in america they are welcoming all these talents you see the logic here that uh, they know if these talented people educated people professional people they will become the citizen of this country then certainly they will not pose any kind of danger and only addition that they will do in our country is the progress okay so that's the main idea here that's why they pay so high and uh, india is losing uh, totally here so we should learn a lot from these countries even in this conservative times they are actually inviting the talented people okay now the next issue is regarding the renuka dam Renuka Lake is a wetland in uh, as a Ramsar site in the state of Himachal Pradesh. You see the Himachal Pradesh is here. This is the boundary and uh, this is the Sirmore district here. Here the Renuka Lake is there and Renuka Dam is being built on a, on the Giri River. Giri River is the tributary of Yamuna. It's, this is the Giri River and this is Yamunotri and the Yamuna is flowing like this. Okay. 
coming uh, till delhi okay and going forward you see this stretch is very very important and this stretch from yamuna nagar to delhi this is the area where total pollution is added to this particular river this river is totally uh, flowing in a very beautiful path and uh, these uh, wetlands and all and no pollution is there and uh, the water is totally clean but in this stretch this river becomes totally polluted okay and giri river is the tributary tones river is the tributary on this giri river this renuka dam is proposed and it is going on since 60s 70s but it is still not completed and now center has signed an agreement with the chief ministers of five states uttar pradesh uttara uh, uttarakhand okay rajasthan delhi and himachal pradesh punjab and haryana are not there okay so remember this and you see the one more important river is satluj river entering from shipkila in himachal pradesh and going into uh, here in state of punjab okay so this is satluj and this is yamuna here okay in this map you see yamuna is flowing like this and this is the bhagirathi river where tihri dam is built and it is making the ganga river ultimately when it is making meeting with the alaknanda river so bhagirathi and alaknanda they both meet and they make the ganga river so tihri dam is on bhagirathi river so gangotri is here and yamunotri is here from yamunotri this yamuna is flowing and this is the giri river where this renuka dam is there okay and uh, this is tones river where kishau dam and kotli dam and lakhwar dam sites are there no sorry lakhwar dam is there on the uh, yamuna river only okay and sometimes these questions are asked that uh, which are the tributaries tones giri bata river and this is uh, hathini kund barrage so they may ask uh, regarding all these things because these are very uh, environmentally sensitive areas and geographically very important now the mou says that the state agency sp power corporation limited will construct operate and maintain the project while the center will fund it so the funding will be coming from center okay so renuka dam project and renuka lake is also there that's a wetland next isro cranks up gaganyaan project you see all these uh, budgetary support was announced for this gaganyaan project where three space travelers would be there three astronauts would be there in space for seven days okay for seven days they will be there and on the height of 400 kilometers okay so it would be a low earth orbit and gsl mark 3 will take them and uh, it is scheduled for december 2021 so that on the uh, eve of independence day in 2022 when uh, it is going to be the 75th independence day we will show it to the world that we have sent these uh, gagan yatris and all and it is going to be a big bang and 2019 year is, year is very very important why because uh, the chandrayaan 2 is also going to be launched we sent chandrayaan 1 in 2008 an important discovery of ice under the moon's surface we did and the chandrayaan 2 would be would be having a lander and a rover also this time and it is going to be a very ambitious project and the most important thing about this chandrayaan 2 that we are going to land at a place where nobody else has gone moon's south pole okay we uh, discussed about the Chang'e 4 landing in the dark area of the moon, which is not visible from Earth. Okay, this is Earth and this is Moon. So on the dark area, Chang'e 4 landed, but we are going to land at a very specific place that is South Pole, and nobody has uh, gone at that that place till now. So it is going to be a huge deal. Okay, so very important details these are, and uh, there would be a human space flight uh, flight center would be created. Okay, and manned mission would be in 2022. unni krishnan nayar as a director uh, he is made and uh, he right now leads the vikram sarabhai space center okay so unni krishnan ayer would be the director of this project and k c one is the isro chairman who gave all these data okay he is k c one next industrial growth falls to 17 month low of 0.5 percent we discussed yesterday that it is going to be a, a troubled phase for, for the next half of fiscal year in the first half we got the 7.6% growth rate but in the second half we will be getting 6.8% growth growth rate only and manufacturing sector would be having the biggest dip because of the uncertainty of the government and the election now the data has come there for the november month that it was 17 month low of industrial growth 
and this data uh, was given according to the index of industrial production iip index that is released by central statistical office which is coming under the ministry of statistics and program implementation okay so cso releases all these uh, uh, consumer price index and uh, this iip index all these important data are released by cpi uh, sorry uh, cso central statistical office okay and uh, they are giving all these data importantly uh, regularly these data come and i think uh, uh, in advance two month uh, cso releases this iip index so very this is uh, a very important data last year in uh, november the growth was only 1.4% in mining and 2.7% uh, this time so many of the sectors they are getting a progress this year and uh, growth just picked up you see due to the impact of demonetization and the gst implementation 2017 was having a lot of uh, uh, hurdles and all these sectors these industrial sector and all these uh, uh, the manufacturing sector they were struggling with the implementation of gst but now they are getting a boost but again there is going to be a hurdle uh, due to the elections so this is the main thing and try these main questions you see this issue is based on the uh, the, the hardik pandya issue and uh, where uh, he made some derogatory comments and th those were totally unwelcomed and regularly we see this issue when cel some celebrities are making unnecessary comments and uh, abusing in public and all these things so this is going to be a issue important for the gs paper 4 okay very important and this parliamentary procedure regarding uh, gs paper 2 importantly and uh, you try them mcqs i will provide you uh, tomorrow this lesson is going to be uh, lengthy now so i will stop here and thanks a lot keep uh, giving your comments and i'm regularly trying my best to make every next lesson better from the last one okay so thanks a lot